South America is home to an impressive diversity of medically significant venomous snakes, and the Fer de Lance holds the title of the most dangerous snake on the continent. But today, we're searching for a viper whose venom is so toxic, even the Fer de Lance can't compete. Let's unravel the facts and fiction of the Amazon's most deadly snake, the Lancehead Viper. My name is Ben Zeno, and my mission is to inspire you to get outside and discover the amazing wildlife that's all around us. In my experience researching and filming venomous snakes, I've had the opportunity to encounter some of the most feared serpents in North America, from copperheads in my backyard to the most toxic rattlesnake in the world. These experiences have shown me that the temperament of these snakes often does not match the misinformation that's constantly being perpetuated about them. But today, I'm not in North Carolina. I am 3,000 miles from home, deep in the heart of the Peruvian Amazon, joining a team of researchers led by Ella Gedwar. Our mission is to locate, capture, and obtain a venom sample from a lancehead viper. So our best chance of encountering a lancehead is to catch one as it moves between ambush sites. And to do that, this mission is going nocturnal. I was blown away by the Amazon during daylight hours, and things only get more interesting as darkness falls. A symphony of insects, frogs, and other nocturnal wildlife ring out through the dark rainforest. And hopefully, somewhere, our target species is waking up and preparing to hunt. Lancet vipers proved a bit trickier to locate than we were anticipating. And despite hours of searching every night, our surveys were not producing any snakes. So we decided to take a break from lancehead surveys and instead search for tree boas by boat. And it was at this point when we had almost no proper capture equipment that we saw an enormous lancehead viper swimming in the river beside the boat. Now I thought a capture was pretty much impossible with the equipment we had. And that is when Ella jumps into the Amazon River after the snake armed with an oar and a snake bag. You wanna, you wanna put it down right by my bag over here? I think, yeah, yeah just no one sit near it. Yeah. No guys, that was, that was crazy. crazy. I can't believe it just happened. Oh, that was God. Really that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts, you guys. That's <laughs> insane capture oh I've ever God. had. Damn, that's a big snake. Are you going to leave it open? I think it'll be okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. hey. Holy crap, that's a big snake. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> now, the team needs to safely tube this animal for a venom extraction. The first thing I realized when we open up this box is that this animal is far more athletic than any venomous snake I've ever worked with. <laughs> okay. Because they love to bite. Don't bite the tube. Please don't bite the tube. Are we just gonna stick our head in there and not move? She's like, I'm hidden. Stop it. Okay. Can I have a hook? You can see why this snake has a lot of bites recorded. Yeah. Stop it. Stop. Oh, she used venom. That's a lot, look at that. This is an extremely delicate dance between snake and researcher, but in the end, Ella's expertise and the team's careful maneuvering pays off. Okay, I have one more idea. Try and like... Can someone hand me the big purple forceps? Big purple Are you, you colorblind? Are you colorblind? Oh, she's, what's stuck, getting her stuck? Is she doing that? Is it a piece of wood? No, I think it might be a scale. Oh. Okay, awesome. Just wash your hands, or watch your hands, I mean. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna put her in that too. Right, there's venom on that too, man. Thank you. Okay. And then I'm gonna have you put on gloves, Derek, okay. and wash your hands. <laughs> Should I put on gloves too? Yeah, just because she likes to spray. Got it? Uh, actually, that's even too big. Now that the lance head is safely restrained, we can begin collecting important biometric data. We are measuring snout vent length and total length. And that's a toucan in the background. <laughs> is that really? Yeah. That's awesome. It's the white-throated toucan. Oh. That is 130 even wow. for SVL. I'm getting some ventral scale clips so that I can use these yeah. to look at the stable isotope ratios, which kind of gives us an idea of what they're eating. It doesn't tell us exactly what they're eating, but we can see kind of like their trophic level. I'm going to inch its head out. I'm going to grab its head with the tongs and get it to milk the cup. Hi, you ready to come out and hang out? It's okay, she has some wiggle room. She can't reach me. There you go. A little more. A little more. A little more. Okay, good. I'll see if she'll do it without me grabbing her. There we go. Good job. And then you can pull her right back. Good job, baby girl. She's like, I will kill you all. And here we go. That's that was her. fast. 
Yeah, it's really easy for them. Do you remember how long it took the, the first time we yeah, watched? Yeah. I will bring them home and run them through reverse phase high performance liquid chromatography, which basically separates the different proteins and measures them as peaks so I can see how many proteins are in this venom and their abundance, basically. And then I will look at how complex this venom is and compare it to other ages of fertile ants or lo locations or other snakes around here. I want to learn how snake venom is evolving. It evolves pretty rapidly in comparison to other functional traits um, that are relevant to survival. So their venom is under really strong selective pressure because it's they need it to eat um, and survive. So I'm looking at how humans might be influencing their venom evolution because they evolve venom selective to their prey type. But if humans are driving out certain species of prey animals as they develop, their venom might evolve in response. So that is what I am looking at with her venom today. This incredible snake right here is Bothrops atrox, the most dangerous snake in Amazonia. This snake is responsible for anywhere from about 40 to 99% of venomous snake bites in the Amazon. And there is a few factors that play into that. For one thing, they're considered both dietary generalists and they're considered habitat generalists. And that might remind you of a snake that we have back in North America that is also responsible for the most venomous snake bites, the copperhead. Different than our copperheads, these lancehead vipers have ridiculously toxic venom. The LD50 of this venom in mice is about 1.1 to 4.9 milligrams per kilogram. That's somewhere around five to 10 times as toxic as copperhead venom. The other thing, as you saw, when we were trying to get this snake tubed, they're extremely athletic. And so bites above the knee are actually pretty common with this snake, which can cause additional complications in terms of the venom traveling rapidly through a person's bloodstream. These are primarily ambush predators and they're extremely energy efficient. So wherever a lancehead viper is living, whether that's in pristine primary rainforest or in a more disturbed or fragmented agrarian landscape, they're probably going to be sitting in the same spot for days at a time, not moving, waiting for something to pass by. And they're aided in their pursuit of prey by heat sensitive L'Oreal pits, just like our other pit vipers. And the juveniles, while they prey about 50% or more on frogs, we actually see an ontogenic shift in diet as these snakes mature. So once they're considered adults, there's a dietary change towards warm-blooded or endothermic prey items. And as that shift in diet happens, we also observe a shift in venom composition. So young atrox actually do have more toxic venom drop per drop than adults. This is one of those weird cases where that myth is actually true. Now the common lancehead, this is not nearly as famous as Bothrop's asper. It's more wide ranging cousin. Although both of these are interchangeably called the Ferdelance as a common name. But basically Bothrop's atrox, this is like the Ferdelance's more toxic Amazonian cousin. Such an amazing snake. They're so impressive and so deserving of our respect. So if you are visiting a part of the world where these snakes are native, it always pays to wear proper PPE and really, really watch where you're stepping because this Crypsis is just incredible. And if you are bit by both drops, either Asper or Atrox, you do need to seek medical attention. Do not try homeopathic remedies. Don't delay getting to medication because the faster you get antivenom, the less systemic reactions you'll probably have. Granted, there's only about a one to 2% mortality rate from these bites, even untreated, but the potential for lifelong consequences is definitely there. We're getting a little rainstorm now and we have to finish data processing. So I'll go ahead and get this beautiful girl back into the lab, but that is an incredible species to work with. I love both our Aatrox because I'm guaranteed to see them every trip that I come down to the Amazon. They're pretty common, not always this size, but I love them because they're quite iconic in this area as well. Um, so I do take the chance to introduce the locals to this snake, which they call Hergon um, in the local language, which is Quechua. Um, they don't really like snakes and especially the snake since it's responsible for the most bites in the area. Um, but I do like seeing this snake and I do love showing people this snake. Um, and it's, it's an iconic snake in this area. If you enjoyed learning about the Lancehead Viper, I think that you'd also enjoy coming along with me in this video as I search for one of North America's most feared vipers. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report.
signing out.